People with disabilities have the same rights as everyone else, including access to local services and transport. Treating people differently can lead to discrimination. Discrimination occurs when a person with an impairment is treated less favourably for a reason relating to their disability or failing to make reasonable adjustments without justification. Taxi drivers and providers have a duty to make reasonable adjustments so that disabled people can use their services more easily. These adjustments could be providing additional help or assistance to enable a person with a disability to make use of services such as assisting a person into or out of a taxi. I suppose a good place to start is the uh, Disability Discrimination Act. The law requires that taxi drivers provide services to disabled people on an equal basis, including reasonable adjustments, taking account of what the requirements are of disabled people. Uh, in many cases that is the case, there are very good taxi drivers. But in a lot of cases, that isn't the case. There's some, there's numerous examples of um, where disabled people have had very bad experiences uh, with taxi drivers. I suppose uh, one of the first thing that comes to mind, not the only thing, but one of the first thing that comes to mind is that uh, taxi drivers who have made uh, and taxi providers who have made the effort to provide accessible vehicles have often used that to charge. Um, disabled customers double fare because they think well they've you know a uh, divine right to do it and uh, wheelchair users and that have been charged two times the fare than than non-disabled customers which is obviously contrary to the Disability Discrimination Act they shouldn't charge disabled people any more any more money than what they would charge someone else it's important for drivers to know that you cannot treat uh, a disabled person any differently than you would a non-disabled passenger. For example, you can't say, I, I can't take you. It's wrong um, to charge them extra. It's wrong to treat them less favourably uh, in any way. Where you take a vehicle and you charge, and you charge somebody just simply on the basis that it's a disabled customer and you can charge a fare and a half, um, you know, that, that is unlawful discrimination. It's less favourable treatment, but it's, it's unlawful discrimination. And, you know, the, the taxi driver was telling me today, but he said, um, no, he said, I would never charge a disabled person a, a, a double fare. It's always a fare and a half if it's a disabled person. And I asked him, you know, well, sorry, do you mind if I ask, on what basis, on what basis do you, do you, do you decide that it's a fare and a half? And he said, well, no, it's the charging policy of the firm, of the taxi firm. I said, you're joking. You just simply, if it's a disabled person, yeah. Oh, no, we don't just, it's not just wheelchair users. Every disabled person, if it's a disabled person, we charge a fare and a half. That's our policy. So there's a taxi company running about charging a fare and a half on the basis that if you collect a disabled person, it's a fare and a half. Uh, others charge double fare. Then you have other examples where... Um, uh, Two examples that I'm aware of recently where a person wasn't allowed to use the taxi because they had a guide, they, they were using a guide dog and they didn't, the taxi driver didn't want the hairs, hairs on the back of the, on the back of the vehicle or whatever and they refused to, to give them a taxi and that person had to wait I think an hour and a half for another taxi, another taxi man to come who didn't mind accommodating a guide dog. Under the Disability Discrimination Act, Obviously, assistance dogs are used regularly, and you'll see more and more out and about now. Taxi drivers have a duty of obligation to carry those dogs. No one is exempt unless they have a medical certificate. So no taxi driver is actually exempt from taking a guide dog unless they can prove that there's a medical reason. Guide dog owners are trained to use taxis. There is a system in place. Guide dog owners will be able to routinely put that system in place, they use the footwell, footwell of the front seat and they put their leg in first, bring the dog in and tuck the dog's tail in, make sure. Guide dogs are groomed and I think that there's probably quite a few myths about tra uh, dogs travelling and being uh, you know, not well behaved, but that's not the case. So I think the taxi drivers need to break down the barriers of um, communication and just treat people as if they are people first and not see their impairment. At the end of the day, a person with a disability has the same right 
to a service and a good service as someone who hasn't got a disability and that's that's and that is the law and that's the that's what we all sign up to and I think it's important that taxi companies take that seriously and actually implement you know training and the kind of thing and instill that in their drivers when they're out and about being the public face of their company. Legislation exists to stop discrimination against disabled people in both the public and private sectors. It applies in the areas of employment, property and access to goods, facilities and services. As taxi drivers, you have a duty to ensure disabled people are not discriminated against or treated less favourably. Disability discrimination occurs when a transport provider treats a disabled person less favourably because of their disability and cannot show that this treatment is justified. For example, a taxi operator cannot charge a disabled person more than a non-disabled person for the same service. A transport provider can also discriminate if they fail to make a reasonable adjustment to make their services more accessible to a disabled person. For example, a taxi operator has a policy of not allowing animals in any of its vehicles. It waives this policy for a deaf passenger with an assistance dog. This is a reasonable adjustment.